This is the MAT140 video number 10. We'll be solving, we're looking at solving systems. Um, again, this is another example of a um, question where we have to solve a system. The example says a trust fund manager has $250,000 to invest in three different investment options, accounts A, B, and C. Projected annual yields for each of these investments is 8% for option A, 7% for option B, and 10% at option C. Suppose the goal for the manager is to earn an average 9% total interest from all these investments. Let's make A the amount that's invested in option A. The B represents the amount in uh, investment B, and C is the amount that's invested in option C. Question one, write two equations to model the assumptions and goals given above. So what we could do here is we start off with A plus B plus C. Each of those amounts is equal to the total 250,000 that's to be invested. And further, because the amount invested in A will earn 8% uh, interest for the year, we could say 8% of the amount invested in A plus option B earns 7%. So 7% of that amount, and uh, option B, uh, option, I'm sorry, option C earns 10%, so we'll go 0.10C equals, and we want 9% uh, total growth, which is, which is possible since we have investments between 7 and 10%, so we could average to 9, something, depending on how much you put in each account, uh, we, could, we could make it uh, add up to uh, total 9%, something in between the 7 and the 10. Well, we want that to be 9% of the total invested because we want to get 9% total growth. So if you take 9% of 250,000, I'll just write it in here as 22,500, but that's because I'm taking 0 0.09 times 250,000. And that's where I get the 22,500. So those are the two equations that model the uh, assumptions and the goals that we have. Now the question two says write, a, write the system of equations as an augmented matrix. And so just turning that into a matrix, we would get 1, 1, 1, 1, and 250,000, and 0.08, 0.07, 0.102500. So that's the augmented matrix, which we can now use a calculator to solve. But notice, you know, that we have three variables and only two equations. And so that means there are infinitely many solutions uh, when there are uh, more variables than there are equations to constrain them. So there will be infinitely many solutions. Uh, and so we're going to write a general solution. Uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. So uh, the next question, number three, says to write the reduced row echelon form of this augmented matrix. So um, we want to write an equivalent matrix, an equivalent augmented matrix from which we can read the general solution. Right. So you can use the calculator or the computer, or you could do it by hand if you want, uh, using the Gauss-Jordan row reduction method. Um, but you could use a calculator to do it for you. Uh, and so let's let's type in this matrix, ask for the reduced row echelon form, and we can read the solution from that form. So I'll go to the calculator, go back to the matrix menu. I'm going to edit this matrix A. The matrix that I'm working with here is two rows and four columns. And that first row is all ones, I mean three ones. And then the 20, 250,000. Then the bottom row is 0 0.08 for account A, 0 0.07 for account B, 0 0.10 for account C, and 22,500 for the 
total return in dollars. All right, now that I have that in, I need to exit from the um, editor and then go back to the matrix menu, go to math so that we can re, um, transform it to the reduced row echelon form. There's the reduced row echelon form option there, B, enter. I want to perform this operation on the matrix A, so second matrix to name the matrix, identify the matrix there, A, and then enter. And so that's the general solution. Uh, I mean, that's the um, reduced row echelon form of the matrix from which we can write the general solution. So this says, write the reduced row echelon form. So 1, 0, 3, 500,000, and 0, 1, negative 2, negative 250,000. Write the reduced row echelon form. That is the reduced row echelon form of the matrix. But it's important to be able to read the um, general solution from this. So let me give some explanation as to what the general solution would look like. So once I have that, um, result from the calculator. Remember that what it represented were coefficients and there would have been an understood equal here because this is an augmented matrix. So this is really amounts to saying, let's write it out complete, we have really 1x, um, actually that was not x, it was a, right? one times a, zero times b, and 3 times C equals 500,000. So this is a system that has the same solutions as the original one, uh, but it will be useful to write the general solution. So we have 0A and 1B minus 2C is negative 250,000. Now because it was only two equations and three variables, I know that there will be infinitely many solutions, and so the, the general solution represents the general form of all of those infinitely many solutions. So what we could do here is say uh, A, we could, we could solve for A, we could make any one of them a free variable, but the, the standard thing to do is to make sort of the, well, to make this this uh, third column here the variable on which that it becomes the the um, the free variable that is it could be the z or in this case c that's the one so basically we could solve for a in terms of c so what I'm saying is you could do a is five hundred thousand minus three c right because you can solve for a that's why you have a one there so you can isolate a and you can isolate the B by just moving the 2C over. So you know that B is negative 250,000 plus 2C. So that means I could, if I knew the value of C, I could find the value of A. And if I knew the value of C, I could find the value of B. So A and B really depend on C, uh, and that's, that's the essential thing to understand. And then the typical way to write the general solution is to say C is an independent variable that could be anything, and so f call that a free variable. We say A is 500,000 minus 3T, where I'm going to say C is equal to this free value T. B is equal to negative 250,000 plus 2t, and then the c is just independent. So this is what I would call the general solution. So this is the general solution. It gives us the form of these infinitely many different solutions. You could choose anything for the c. Uh, you could make t any value, and then you would know what the a and the b would have to be as well. So. Um, so that's the general solution. So we could use that to answer uh, all of the r remaining questions that come up. Like we can fill in this table 
Um, we could also do things like there's there's basically a restriction that you can't invest a negative amount of money. So for example, if t was zero, I realize that b goes negative, and so actually it's it's not practical uh, in the context of the problem to have uh, t equal to zero, even though it would be algebraically a solution. Uh, in the context, I expect all of these values to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. So uh, even though there are infinitely many solutions algebraically, because this is a financial application, I'm going to assume that we're not investing negative amounts of money. That would be like borrowing, which actually could work, but let's say not in this example. Uh, we'll just assume all of these, we're, we're not borrowing money here. So uh, all of those have to be greater than or equal to zero. So you, we could answer some of these questions about the minimums and maximums, or we could just go right into this table. Let's just do that. So um, let's say, for example, we want to invest, uh, we decide that we don't want to invest in A. In account A, let's put zero dollars there. What would that, what implication would that have as to the amounts that we would need to put in accounts B and C? So we'll take one of the, each of these one at a time. You could go through and number these, perhaps, you know. If we put zero in account A as this first row uh, is considering, what would that mean about accounts B and C? So I need to go back and look at my general solution and say, if we make this equal to zero, what would the T value have to be? So I need to take 500,000 minus 3t and set that equal to zero. But that means 3t would be 500,000 and that gives me 166,660. Now it continues, um, you know, when you're looking at $166,000, 66 cents or 67 cents, or let's just round it off, let's go $166,667 we have to round off somewhere. This is a practical thing to do. So I'll just decide to round it off to the nearest dollar. And now I know the totals won't add up exactly because I'm, I'm using rounded values, but, but uh, this is more practical. Right? So uh, rather than going to the nearest, to the nearest penny, this is fine. So 166,667 would have to be the value of T, which means you would invest 166,000 in account C. And account B is negative 250 plus 2 times the value of T. That's about $83,334. So if we decided to put nothing in account A, account B would have to be 83334 and account C 166667 and I can just sort of double check to make sure does this add up to the total we had invested uh, we had a hundred and uh, we had 250,000 so 83,334 plus the 166667 adding those together, that's 250,001, and that's because I rounded off. So we could put that back to just three, rounding down. So basically, these amounts approximate, you know. Uh, you don't really have to do that, but that makes it add up to 250,000 exactly. Another thing you could do is remember what the returns were on each of these accounts. So we could just double check that everything's correct. This one was earning 8%. This account was earning uh, 7%. And this account earned 10%. And so we could just double check. If you take 83,333 at 7% and 166,667 at 10% and see if you don't get that same original goal uh, to make sure that we, we meet the goal, which was 9% of the 250,000, which was that 22,500. Let's just check it. I mean, it should work, but uh, 
doesn't hurt to check. 0 0.07 times the 83.333 plus the 0.1 times the 166.667. That is 22,500 uh, and one cent. So, you know, there's a little error due to rounding there because it wasn't exactly these amounts. So the goal is reached. Uh, we didn't invest in all of the accounts. We had the restriction that we decided not to go with account A, but we still want to make the 22500 So you could split it up this way. Let's go with uh, zero. Suppose you find out, you know, we don't really want to invest in account B, uh, but we want to invest all the money. We still want to get the 22500 return. How about you go with account B is zero? So account B was the negative 250, one, two, three zeros, plus 2t. And I set that equal to zero because that's the restriction that I now have in this table that I want to put zero in account B. And this would generally be what the amount is uh, in, in account B in the general solution. Well, if that's what if that's what we have invested in account B, we could figure out what the necessary value of T would have to be, and once we have the T value, we can get A and C. So solving this, we're going to get 2T is 250,000. So T is half of 250 is 125,000. So then I know it's going to have to be 125,000 in C, and I could also figure out the amount in A. Because A was 500,000 minus three times the value of T from the general solution, this is 125,000. Okay, well that's interesting. So that came out to be 125,000 also. So if you put zero in account B, you'd have to put 125,000 in each of these two accounts. Well, I'm sure that adds up to 250, but does it actually add up to the goal? I mean, it should as long as all the math is correct, but you know, we could make a mistake anywhere along this process. So it's okay to check. Uh, let's just check again. 0 0.08 times 125,000 plus, I'm going to do 0.10 times 125,000. And that gives me 22,500. It meets the goal as well. Good. Now, we have another option here. Suppose we decided we wanted to put zero dollars in account C. What would that imply about the other two accounts? That means I have to put uh, t equal to zero, but hold on a second, we had account B would go negative, right, because we had B equal to negative 250, one, two, three, zeros, plus two times zero, that's negative, so that's not possible under all the other restrictions. So it's basically saying you're not going to be able to get that goal of um, uh, nine percent. We wouldn't be able to reach nine percent, uh, and that's you know that makes complete sense because hold on, if you put no dollars at ten percent with the eight percent return and the seven percent return, there's no way you could average nine percent return. So this is not possible. All right, how about a hundred and fifty thousand in account C? How does it work out? Well, we know account C is the value of T, so going to op sort of like row four, option four of all these choices. Let's go, T is 150,000 equals the amount in C. So then we can figure out what the other two balances have to be. Start, start with the count A, that was the 500,000 minus three times the value for T That's 50,000. Account B, the general solution for account B had negative 250,000 
plus 2 times the value of t, so that's also 50,000. And actually, I might have been able to sort of guess that because I already knew two of the balances. See, if I already figured out that this had to be 50,000 in account B, I could have just said, well, how much money do we still have left? We still have 50,000, so that would have to be what was there. But it was nice to see that it also agreed with the math we had done. So if you put 50,000 here and 50,000 there, uh, then you'll add up to 250,000 total. And you can check to make sure that it adds up to the goal of um, a 9% return. We could just check that again. So to check it, I'll do 50,000 times 0 0.08, 50,000 times 0 0.07, and 150,000 times 0 0.10. That checks, so uh, everything's good there. Let's go to, uh, suppose we decide for other reasons uh, beyond what's stated that we would like to invest 100000 in account B. OK, in account B, putting 100000 there, what would that imply? So I know generally the value for B would always be this to agree with all the constraints that we had in the problem. But if we want to include the constraint that this is equal to 150, then we could figure out the value of T and then use that to extrapolate the other balances. So solving for T, you could add 250 on both sides. 250,000 on both sides. Okay, that means the T has to be 200,000. Now this is actually not going to work, right? Because that's, if we put 150,000 in account B, there's no way we could put 200,000 in account uh, C. So I know this isn't going to work. And maybe we could, without just based on that, I know we're going to end up with an impossibility, but I just want to see it play out on account A. Suppose that we went 500,000 minus 3 times 200,000. Yeah, that's also coming out with a, a problem because that's, that's negative. Right? That's 500,000 minus 600,000 is negative 100,000. So I already knew it was impossible because I was I would have to invest more than we had and this would have to be negative so this is just not possible. So it is impossible to reach the goal. If you put 100,000 in an account that earns 7% you and you only have 250,000, you wouldn't be able to reach the goal. There you wouldn't have um if even if you invested all the remaining money at 10%, you wouldn't be able to get the the re, re, uh, the desired return of 9% overall. So that wasn't an option. Well, how about 100,000 at 8%? So now we're considering putting 100,000 in account A at 8%. How much would we have to invest in the other two accounts? Or is it even possible? Let's see. If that 100,000 is equal to the balance, uh, the general solution for uh, account A, which was 500,000 minus 3 times T, then we could find the value of T. We'd end up with negative 400,000 uh, equals negative 3T. So T would be 400 divided by 3, 400,000 divided by 3. So that's 133,333, another place where I have to kind of round off so that my amounts may not come out to the exact penny. But um, it's more practical to just round off there. Say $133,333, we won't worry about the pennies. So if that's the value of T, let's see what happens with the, so we know the amount in account C. 
Now I have 100 here and 133 there, so actually I could figure it out right there. That's 233,000 invested. I could just subtract that from the 250 and get my answer that way. It's obvious the rest of the money goes in account B. So either way, let's just, we could, in fact, we could do it both ways. Right? So um, negative 250,000 plus two times the value of um, the value of T, which is 133,333. That's 16,666. And I could, as I suggested, I might have checked, I could check that another way. I could go, uh, if we added these two amounts together, the 100,000 that we already had in A, plus the 133 we know we've got to put in C, it's 133,333 that I'm putting in account C. So, so I would have invested 100,000 plus 133,333 means 233,333 subtracted from the 250. So yeah, that's the same thing. It's just that uh, it's a it's an issue of the rounding. So um, it it was not really one hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three exactly here. It was and thirty three cents would have which would have, would have made up the the sixteen sixty seven sixteen six six seven if you if we had used the pennies here. So you know it it's. Due to the rounding, both of these are, are, are perfectly reasonable answers. Um, I guess now that I did that, I actually know that it really should be uh, 1667 in account B. If I decided to make this add up to, to if I rounded it off to just the nearest dollar, then this has to be 667 if I go with 333 here. And again, I could check to make sure that I did everything right. Let's get 8% of 100,000, 7% of 16,667, 10% of the 133, see if it adds up to the required 9% of the total invested. Yeah, and then it came out to $22,499.99. So this because uh, of the difference of pennies, it didn't come out exactly close enough. Let's say 22500 if you round off. So yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, question five says, what is the maximum amount that could be invested in account C while still investing all of the available money and satisfying the given goal of 9% overall interest? Well, to answer this sort of max and min, these max and min questions, it's all about those constraints that the amount invested always has to be uh, zero or positive. So it, looking again at the general solution, I know that A has to be 500,000 minus 3T, which I know has got to be positive, B or zero or positive. Uh, and actually, if I want to invest uh, all of the yeah, it's got to be greater than or equal to zero. So then B is negative 250, three zeros, plus 2t, and I want to keep that greater than or equal to zero. And c is just the t value, and I want to keep that greater than or equal to zero. So just find out what, what t values uh, are, uh, what restrictions do we have on the t values to keep these guys uh, from going negative. So that just, if you just set it equal to zero, um, you can get the answer there. Oh, actually, let's keep the inequality. So 500, 1, 2, 3 zeros minus 3t greater than or equal to 0. So 500,000, 3 zeros greater than or equal to 3t. So dividing by 3, 16,667 rounding. No, that's not right. That's 166,000. 
667 and I just rounded off to the nearest dollar just to be convenient uh, so that the T value cannot be greater than 166,000 uh, if T was bigger than that we would run up into a negative value for A so that is one restriction and then this negative 250 three zeros plus 2t that also has to be greater than equal to zero so you could say 2t greater than equal to 250,000 so t has to be greater than or equal to 125,000 so that's it the t has to be bigger than 125 and it has to be less than 166 667 What's the maximum amount? The maximum amount um, the maximum amount is this 166. See, T has to be greater than 125 and it has to be less than 166. So that's the maximum amount. Now, of course, if you put all the money in account C, you could make even more. If it really did earn 10%, you would end up with 10% return. But, you know, you might want to diversify and not put all the money because it might not be, it might advertise 10%, but maybe it doesn't turn out that way. Um, it's only been 10% in the past. And so you say, well, we don't want to invest it all there. We want to uh, diversify, put money in different accounts uh, to reduce risk. So, but if we want to get 9% overall, uh, we need to put 166 at the most. Yeah, this is the amount at 10%. So, I mean, I guess what's happening is this, as soon as we invest more than 166,000, we're going to get more than 9% overall return. Not, of course, just from that account, but uh, with the rest of the money invested in the other accounts, it ends up being more than 9% uh, overall. What's the minimum amount that must be invested in account B to achieve uh, the desired goal? Well, we could invest zero in account B because, as you as you see in the table, it's possible we could go all the way down to zero in account B and then just split the money between accounts A and C and still get the re re um, required nine percent goal overall. So the minimum really was zero for account B. That would happen exactly when you put 125,000 in account C. If you made B exactly zero, then this T had to be 125,000, and that means you had to put 125,000 in the other account. So zero was really the minimum uh, for account B. Okay, and here uh, it says, if it's assumed that putting some money in each account is a wise way to reduce risk, write a sentence explaining your investment recommendation, how much you would put in each account, and there is more than one correct answer. Just, you know, pick some amount that you want to put in all three that actually solves the system, that satisfies all the requirements. So I thought I'll just pick a, a nice uh, round number since since I had the general solution like this since that's the general solution I could pick uh, any value of T now I know the restrictions on T from this part back here when I did uh, part number five I know that the T value we could, we could pick any value between 125,000 and 166,000 so anything in that is there's is right um, it'd have to be some value between those two numbers if you're going to invest money in all three accounts. So I just thought, why don't we make it 150,000, just a nice round number. If I pick T equal 150, then I could figure out what the other accounts would have to be. So I'm just going to choose T equal 150,000. That's my amount in count C. So that's 500 minus uh, 450, so that's 50,000 in account A. Account B, negative 250,000. Two times the 150,000. 
So that's 300,000 minus 250, that's equal to 50,000. So this is one possible answer to go 150 in account C, the one that was earning the most, and then 50,000 in the other two just to balance it out. I kind of like that answer because that's the most invested in the highest earning account, but then to just be diversified, we'll put the remaining 100,000 in these other two accounts. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of that example. I hope this has been helpful.